today I'm going to do some digging through my YouTube archives because I've actually been making YouTube videos for quite a long time. I think it's about seven years now. And recently I've been thinking about a lot of the beauty products that I use, hair care, skincare, makeup, everything. I've been thinking that they're things that I've used for a really long time. So I've gone back, I've tested that theory, I've looked back at previous videos. I have done a blog post today just about makeup products in general that I've used for a long time with like a little time stamp for the first time that they appeared either on my blog or my YouTube channel. So if you want to have a read of that then check out the link below. But today's video is going to be a look back at my 2011 Best of Beauty makeup favourites and I'm basically going to show you a clip from the video which is quite entertaining in itself because my eyebrows start about here um, and basically talk through whether I still use the product, if I don't, why I got rid of it or why I just used it up and didn't repurchase. And then there are actually a couple of things I still use today almost six years later, like five and a half, six years later. But one that I have really enjoyed using this year is this and it's the Benefit the professional. I really, really have enjoyed using this and I find that when I use it, it definitely leaves a really nice smooth base for my foundation to go over and does make my foundation last longer. So Bennett the Professional is no longer a product that I use and I feel like I didn't really use it for a long length of time. For me, I don't really like the feel now of those silicon heavy pore filling primers. I would much rather use something that was more moisturising, something like the Too Faced Hangover RX primer is awesome. Or the Becca ones I really like, so no, I don't use that one and I feel like maybe a year or two later I really switched up my beauty routine and didn't go for anything like that. My favourite foundation is probably going to come as no shock to you guys and it is of course the Gemma Kid Light As Air foundation. Now I primarily use the shade 03 which is light medium but I have also got the shade 2 which is light which is sort of my more sort of wintry colour or just paler days colour but I do enjoy using um, shade 3 a bit more. I'm still upset that this foundation was discontinued and that I just worked through all of the backups that I had. There was something about it and maybe if I used it now I'd be like oh no too heavy too much coverage but there was something about it that was just so glowy on the skin it evened out my skin I mean yes I did use a very orange shade in it but even to this day it's probably my most loved discontinued product like I would love to try it. I would love it to come back. If anyone has any dupes for it that are currently around these days, I would love to hear. I feel like I've, I've forgotten about it and I'm no longer on my quest for the perfect dupe, but I do still miss it. I don't currently use it because unfortunately it's gone forever. Now my favourite concealer this year was my favourite concealer of last year as well. It hasn't changed and it's the Bobbi Brown Creamy Concealer. Now I've got these or Creamy Concealer set here that comes with a little powder and the, um, the actual Creamy Concealer as well and I absolutely adore it. I have the shade Sand. I used that concealer and that powder up until it was like the last little bit around the side that I was scooping out. I absolutely love that concealer. And actually I still like it now. I don't currently use it. I currently use if I want sort of a concealer in a pot that's quite like that. Like the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place is awesome. Glossier Stretch Concealer and the NARS Complete Cover. You know the little matte concealer that they've just bought out. I really like those. So it's not one I currently use. I feel like it was the first of its kind. It was very creamy, very emollient, and quite a full coverage. There wasn't really much else out there all those years ago that sort of did the same thing. And I still like it, but I do just feel like it kind of settles a little bit under my eyes. But I'm always tempted, every time I go past the counter, I'm always tempted to re-pick up a concealer because it was my favourite for a reason, and I did use it for many, many years. My favourite bronzer of the year is something which I've actually just hit pan on, and it's the NARS Laguna bronzer. And I'm pretty terrified that I've just hit pan on it because once you hit pan, on NARS powder products they tend to shatter and go everywhere so I'm not really looking forward to that but it's a great great bronzer this is an amazing product just for giving a nice bit of kind of shimmer to the cheeks but not too much and just adds a really nice warmth to the skin NARS Laguna this has really taken me down makeup memory lane for sure I really like this product and I feel like I went through two of them which is actually quite an achievement because they're massive pounds of product I don't currently use it now because I feel like bronzers just got better. The bronzer market kind of exploded and I felt like that was a little bit too heavy, a little bit too orange toned and it did have that little bit of shimmer running through it. Nowadays I go for something like the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil bronzer or I'm really into cream bronzers at the moment like the Milk one. Blush is something that I haven't really reached for that much this year but when I did reach for it it was my favourite of last year as well and it's MAC Melba Blusher. It's definitely just my go-to blusher, it goes with any kind of makeup look, smoky eye, neutral eye, 
not really much makeup on at all it looks fantastic with all of those but like I said it hasn't really been a blushy year for me but if I did have to pick one it would be this. So in my early days of blogging and kind of makeup discovery I was really into blush so I don't feel like my skin was as red back then as it is now a Mac Melba I really liked it I loved it and if I do wear blush these days I still do go for that kind of shade like a peachy sort of pink I don't currently have it in my collection but I would recommend it if you're into peachy pink blushes because it was such a beautiful colour but these days I basically use nothing or like the Glossier Cloud paints or something like Clinique Melon Pop Cheek Pop is actually a really nice shade. Contouring is definitely something which I discovered this year, it was something that I hadn't really done too much before and a product that really helped was the Sleek Face Contour Kit and I have the shade Light and I've said this before and I'll say it again, the highlighter is a bit crap, I don't really like it too much, I find it way too shimmery and over the top for my cheeks but the actual contour shade itself is fantastic, it's such a decent kind of matte, high quality, really blendable shade and it just adds a really nice sort of touch of dimension to my face. Who remembers when the sleek contour palettes first came out they had a picture of a lady looking really sculpted on the front. Um, I had Lily, my Lily, Lily Pebbles, Lily Melrose and Zoe round a couple of months ago and we were laughing so much at the old packaging. The old packaging of this was really quite cringy but it was the first of its kind. Contouring really wasn't a thing, everyone just used MAC Harmony blusher, that was all everyone sort of had for a paler skin tone in order to contour so when this came out and it was drugstore everyone just went mad for it it was a great price point but the contour was good I feel like I hit pan with it although now I don't currently own it I don't currently use it I'm actually using the Tanya Bird Cosmetics contour stick at the moment but my favorite favorite is the Kevin Aquan contour powders they are so good I mean they cost like three or four times the price of that but in my eyes they're worth it the tone of them is just so good and now they're available in more shades which Yay! My favourite highlighter of the year has been something which I've discovered in the past few months and it is the, of course, the Gemma Kid Dewy Glow All Over Radiance Cream in Ice Gold. I absolutely adore this highlighter. Before I used this, I did really enjoy the Dior Amber Diamond highlighter, but now this is just my absolute favourite. It's so subtle, it blends into the skin so nicely, looks fantastic in photos and is really multifunctional. Again, another one that I am devastated that was discontinued and just like gone from our lives. This was such a good product and actually I feel that IT Cosmetics, I'll make sure it's linked down below for you actually, it's called like Luminizer anti-aging, I don't know, something like that. It's very similar in tone, it's very similar in texture and I really really enjoy that, although recently of course I've been loving my Glossier Halo Scope so I've been using that. So I don't currently have this in my routine. I feel like it was such a big product and you needed such a little amount of it that I never actually got to the bottom of it. And actually I'm thinking now it might be a bit too much for me. It, it was quite stark, it was quite in your face, it was like a little bit metallic. I'm thinking that if I use it now I'd probably be like, mm, no, maybe not for me. Although I'm definitely not into powder as much as I was this time last year, if I did have to pick one it would be the same as last year and it's the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural and I have the shade, it's gone absolutely everywhere, <laughs> awful. It's the shade Medium and I use Medium in the winter and then Medium Plus in the summer. So this is a product that I actually still have in my routine now. I still have it in my drawers and I still use it whenever I want a powder. In fact, this is the only powder that I own. That's how good I think it is. It's my favourite. I don't use medium, a medium plus, uh, like I used to. I do use medium as my summer colour, not my winter colour anymore, and I basically hit pan on this. This is old packaging, I must have had this for absolutely yonks. But I did pick up um, light plus, and this is what I use. This is in the new packaging that has a mirror in that everyone has wanted for years. Um, Light Plus is definitely more my shade and I just find this is the best powder, it sets without looking cakey. For all of the reasons that I mentioned back in my other video, I still love it now. I just think it's the best powder if you like a dewy, luminous finish to your skin, but you need your makeup to last a little bit longer. The sort of a makeup setting spray, the obvious choice is MAC Fix Plus. Now I'm definitely not using this as much as I did last year, but it is still really nice for kind of, in the summer it's really good for revitalising your makeup and sort of causing you down and just sort of rehydrating your skin really and in the winter I find it's really good if your skin is feeling a bit tight like in the cold in the wind you know when you get in and your skin is just feeling really kind of aggravated and tight a few spritzes of this kind of calms it down so it's really good in all seasons there's ridiculous amount of uses for this. What happened to MAC Fix Plus? I feel like it just fell off the face of the earth and everyone kind of stopped using it. Although I do see a lot of the American beauty channels that I watch they tend to wet their brush with it before they apply like metallic 
um, eyeshadows. I personally don't use it anymore and I don't really use spritzes anymore in general. I do have the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray which is really good um, but I tend to only use it if I'm like out all day for like 12 hours plus and I need my makeup to last for a really long time. In terms of what I've used for my eyebrows it is the same as last year and it is MAC Espresso, which is this shade here and I love this in my eyebrows. The combination of this with the Eco Tools Hard Angle Brush is absolutely fantastic for my brows. It's such a good match. I mean, me back then just chatting about my eyebrows just makes me laugh anyway, because I really did go overboard with the tweezers and I will forever regret that beauty look. That was not a good beauty look. However, MAC Espresso was a really good shade to put through my brows. However, now I'm really into either just the Glossier Boy Brow or I'm currently using the It Cosmetics Power Brow, I think it's called. It's a really good brow pencil. Or I just go and get kind of an HD brow treatment where they tint my eyebrows, wax them, thread them, do all these kinds of things, and then I don't actually need to do much to them aside from sort of brush them and put them in place. Now for eyeshadow primers, this is kind of an obvious one, and it is the same as last year as well, and it's the Urban Decay Primer Potion. This is going to last me forever. I don't wear eyeshadow too often, but when I do, I always pop this on underneath, and it's just, I've still got absolutely loads of this left. Now you know this is an old school video when it's in that little like genie potion bottle, whatever it was, and everyone used to have to make videos about how to cut them into and get all the product out. Terrible packaging in terms of getting the product out. I'm so pleased that Urban Decay updated it into like a squeezy tube. So much better. I actually don't use that anymore because I am now so into the NARS version of it. I just find that the NARS version works so much better for me. Literally my eyeshadow never creases when I use it and I don't feel like it's as claggy or heavy on my eyelids which I found that the Urban Decay one can be a little bit of that sometimes. Now for eyeshadows I have been a bit cheeky and only managed to get it down to my two favourite eyeshadows. One is the same as last year and it is, it's in the same palette as my MAC Espresso eyeshadow actually and it's MAC All The Glitters and it's what I've got on my eyes today. I've got a mixture of All The Glitters all over the eye and then MAC Espresso in the crease. Um, but I just adore all the glitters. It's the only eyeshadow that I've ever hit pan on, which obviously means that I do use it a lot. MAC All The Glitters. I loved that eyeshadow for years. Probably for like a solid four years of my life, that was all I wore whenever I used eyeshadow. However, I actually got rid of it maybe about a year or two ago. I still had it. I hit pan. I was like, come on, Annie, you're going to use this all up. But for me, it just isn't the perfect shade anymore. When I was younger and I just did sort of a very pale metallic eye and lots of mascara, that was sort of my look back then. Whereas now I prefer something more matte, like a warm brown on the eye. I find that it gives me definition and shadow and that's sort of what suits my face better these days. So that's the same as last year, but there is kind of a new entry, one that I discovered this year, and it's the Chanel Illusion de Ombre. Um, it's sort of a cream gel eyeshadow in the colour 82, which is Omerville and it is absolutely stunning. This is a kind of a creamy, more sheerer version of MAC All The Glitters. It's very, very similar, but just in sort of a different form, and it just gives a nice texture to the eye. This one was a classic as well, and it definitely fell into the same sort of colour category as All The Glitters, so for all those reasons, I no longer currently have it. Plus, those cream eyeshadows really dry out so quickly. However, I do have the shade Mirage, and I love it, and I think that it's now my perfect shade. It's like bronzy, golden kind of gorgeousness, so if I want an italic, I tend to go more for that, and if I want a matte, I'll go for something, some kind of classic eyeshadow out of a palette. My favourite eyelash curler is, of course, my Shu Amura eyelash curler. I use this every day. I bought this two years ago now, and this is kind of what kick-started my whole sort of getting back into a beauty thing. Yeah, I definitely got this. I got this in January sales two years ago. Um, it's still going strong. I use it every single day. I no longer use these and I feel like I heard a rumour that Shuamura Cosmetics in the UK is like no longer a thing. Not sure if that's true. However, these days I am so into the Surratt eyelash curlers. They are amazing. They're even better than the Shuamura ones. Then my favourite eyeliner has to be, or eye pencil, has to be the MAC uh, NC15 NW20 Chromographic Pencil. It's just a flesh toned eyeliner. It is absolutely beautiful. I end up using this for the past like three months, I'll say three or four months. I've used this every single day and it's something which 
I use and then I throw into my bag as well and carry around with me all day and just sort of reapply. This is one that I still have, disgustingly. And when I watched this video when I was putting together the list, I was like, that means that I've had this for about five and a half years, which is vile, which makes me realize that I should buy a new one. But when I bought this, this was limited edition. This wasn't part of their kind of full lineup. And I feel like now it's permanent. So that's why I held on to it for so long. Cause I was like, oh my God, it's limited edition. And for me, I don't tend to do the nude lash line thing as much as I used to because I feel like now it just looks a little bit more stark however this is the perfect shade I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury the I cheat one is good but it's too obvious it's a little bit paler this is a very good like flesh tone match for me and over the years I have used it to conceal spots and to kind of sort out my lip line various different things it's just good to have a flesh colored pencil but my favorite mascara is the L'Oreal Telescopic Waterproof Mascara, which I just go on and on and on about. I love this mascara. I've repurchased this, repurchased this around three or four times. Nothing else compares to me, and it's not too expensive. I think it's around the £12 mark. Um, I really enjoy waterproof mascaras because they hold a curl in the eyelashes. When L'Oreal discontinued that mascara, I was like, what the hell, man? I love this mascara. I've literally been rebuying this every couple of months from you for the last couple of years. Like please, what are you doing, what are you thinking? And I still, I don't know, what it feels like it's been a long time, so maybe if I used it now, I wouldn't love it as much as I did back then, but I feel like I would. I feel like it was just perfect. It was such a good mascara. If you like waterproof mascara, if you need something that holds a curl in your eyelashes, Thankfully, over the years, I have found some really good ones, like the Fairy Drop Scandal Queen Mascara is great, the Hero Make one that I'm currently using is really good, and so there's definitely some that I've found that sort of have filled the hole, filled the void in my life, but what I would do to have that mascara back on the shelves, I would be one happy bunny indeed. Now we're on to lip products, and my favourite lip balm is the Blistex Intensive Moisturiser. I've spoken about this quite a few times. Again, it's super cheap one or two quid from Superdrug or Boots, but I love this for just popping on. It's kind of like an actual moisturizer for your lips, and so it's something that I pop on before I go to bed. I'd completely forgotten about this lip balm, and I'm really happy that I've rewatched this video and sort of, it's gone back into my mind, because I feel like over the years, I've used it every now and again. If my lips have been really, really dry, or I'm having some kind of issue going on there, I do go and pick up another tube and sort of go back to it, but I don't use it as much as I did back in the day, like now with lip balm, I'm currently using the Bite Beauty, like the Agave one, but that's in the stick. I just use that before bed, or like the Glossier Balm.com. I'm not really committed to any lip balms. I sort of, I mix, I mix it around, I mix and match. Um, but that one is such a good one from the drugstore if you're suffering from really, 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 really dehydrated lips. It's awesome. I have been a bit naughty with lipsticks and picked two because I just couldn't really pick one. I'd say for the first part of the year, I used this one the most, and it is Mac Shiger which I've spoken about quite a few times and you can see I just have the tiniest tiniest amount of this left. Shy Girl was my lip colour jam for so many years. I actually went all the way down to the bottom of the tube, had to buy a new one and then when I bought the new one I was like this colour is not the same as it used to be. I feel like they must have reformulated it a couple of years ago or like rejigged the colour a little bit and I wasn't as into it but I still think about it. I just feel like now perhaps it's a little bit too peachy for me. And then recent, more recently I've been going for Hue Lipstick from MAC, which is glaze finish. And again, I have the tiniest amount of this left as well. It's what I'm wearing on my lips today. And it's just a pinky, kind of pinky, milky nude. It's a fantastic color for all different types of makeup. Very, very neutral. Hue, this was such a popular shade. I feel like everyone has had a MAC Hue at some point in their lives. For me now, this would be way too pale. However, back then, worked perfectly for that kind of pale lip, bronze eye, orange face thing that I had going on. And then my final product is my favorite lip gloss, and this is the Clarins. It's a light natural lip perfector in the shade 02, I think. It's the peachy shade. If you're not really a lip gloss girl, I would highly recommend checking this out because this is not your average lip gloss. So the final product in the video is actually the final product that I still have. And these are the Clarins Instant Light Natural Lip Perfectors. Back in the day and in this video, I mentioned the shade two because they only used to have one, two, and three. That was it. That was the only colors that they have. Whereas now I feel like they've got about nine, maybe nine or 10, and they bring out limited edition ones as well throughout the year. They've realized 
that it's a great product, people really like it, people want it in more shades. So now I actually really like 05, which is a little bit corally, a little bit pink, or 07, which is more of a mauvey pink. Of course, the colours actually don't really matter too much because it doesn't transfer much onto the lips, it's a very sheer formula. But they are so great and I'm so happy that I think it was Nick Chapman from Pixie Rue back in the day mentioned these because they are still my favourite lip gloss. Nothing else comes close. Hydrating, non-sticky, love them. I feel like that was good fun. I always like having a little wander down makeup memory lane. It always cracks me up to see those old videos. But also makes me happy to see how things have changed over the years, how my tastes have changed, and that there are still things that I'm using all these years later. I think that's really cool. That just shows how much of a favourite they really are because I feel like they've been my favourites every single year since 2011 but thank you for watching this video if there's any products that you can think of that you've used for like plumbing ages pop them down in the description box below because I'd love to know what like your version of the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish is maybe it's MAC Mineralize Skin Finish who knows let me know and check out that blog post as well if you haven't already I will pop two videos here for you to check out that I uploaded recently if you haven't seen them already but thank you so much for watching and I will see you on Wednesday with a brand new vlog bye